Okay. Good evening, everyone. Uh, our next topic is Mohr circle. Okay. Um, okay. Our next. Topic. See, you should make me own slide. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Our next topic is Mohr circle. So, Mohr circle is a graphical representation of. It is a graphical method to find out. uh very uh, find out what is normal stresses and shear stresses acting on a given plane okay in general it is really subjected to different kinds of uh, stresses various complex stresses uh, one of them is uh, plane stress plane con- plane stress condition i will share So in general, a material is subjected to different kinds of stresses. For example, a material subjected to a complex stress system in two-dimensional it can be represented like this. It is also known as plane stress condition. this kind of stress state is called plane stress system in which the stress in one direction is zero and the shear stress components associated with the other two this kind of stress state in which it means for example let us take this stress state Sigma-jet is zero. And shear components associated with jet plane is also zero. So you can write this in a matrix form like this. So, so this this is a two D stress system. So we have analytical solutions to find out the stresses, the normal and shear stresses acting on a plane. Okay, acting on different planes. We have analytical solutions. Now, Mohr circle is a graphical solution. To, uh, graphical procedure to find out the various normal stresses and shear stresses acting on those planes. We'll see how to draw the Mohr circle. Okay. Clear this thing. Okay. or element here
So this is our standard element. Okay. So this is our standard element. Give me a sec. So before drawing the more circle, we need to add up some sign convention. So our sign convention. You treat tension or tensile stresses as positive and compressive as negative. These are reference to normal stresses or direct stresses, you can say. And when it comes to shear stresses, we treat clockwise shear stresses, which means if you take moment about this point, the stresses which are trying to rotate the element in clockwise, they are taken as positive and anti-clockwise stresses are taken as negative. If you look at the standard element, Look at the standard elements. Sigma x. Sigma x is tension, so it is positive. Sigma y is also tension, it is positive. From the moment the equilibrium condition to keep the element in equilibrium. The complementary shear stress arises. You can see the magnitude is tau x y. From this, you, in the element, the shear stresses on the plane on which sigma y is acting, it is positive because it is trying to rotate the element in clockwise direction. Uh, the shear stresses acting on the plane on which the normal stress sigma x acts, sigma x acts is trying to rotate the element in anti-clockwise direction. So it is negative. So this is about our sign convention. Okay. So now the more circle. To draw the more circle, first we'll draw coordinate axis. Okay. So on x axis, we have normal stresses sigma. On y axis, we have shear stresses tau. Okay. Now, let the origin be of. So, to draw the shear stresses, first you have to plot the points. So, first we take sigma x, normal stress sigma x. So, since sigma x is tensor, we plot it on the right side. So let the basic point. This point is no zero. Again, you take sigma y. Sigma y is also tension. So plot it somewhere. Here we are assuming sigma x greater than sigma y. And from moment equilibrium, tau 
x y equal to tau y x. Sigma y. This point is sigma y zero. Now, come to the. Now we have to plot the shear stresses. The shear stress acting on the plane on which sigma x, sigma x acting is trying to rotate the element in in anti-clockwise direction. So it is negative. So we have to plot below. Okay, now the shear stress acting on the plane on which sigma y acting is positive. So we have to plot it. Okay. Now we got the points. This point is sigma x tau y. This point is sigma y comma tau x y. Now join these two points. Okay, join these two. Since Okay, now let us mark this. Let it be P. P dash. Q. Q dash. So, P dash Q dash represents the diameter of the Mohr circuit. Now you can draw Mohr circuit by taking that. This is the center of the Mohr circuit. Okay. Now you can draw the most kill by taking SP dash or SQ dash as a radius. Now it doesn't draw the most circuit. Okay. So this is our more circle. Okay. So it is not exact circle. Not symmetric about x axis. Okay. If you observe the plane SP dash is representing the plane on which sigma x is acting. Right? Similarly, the plane SQ dash is representing the plane on which sigma y is acting okay in the standard element you can observe the angle between them in the standard you can observe here the angle between these two planes is 90 degrees, but here when it comes to more circle, the angle between the two planes is 180 degrees. So we can we can say that if a plane making an angle theta with a uh, with a plane on which sigma x acting in the more circle, it makes two theta with the plane on which sigma x is acting. So every theta in the standard element is equal to 2 theta in the Mohr circle. Now, I want to find out, now I want to find out stresses acting on a plane 
I want to find out stresses acting on a plane theta, which is inclined at an angle theta with respect to on a plane on which sigma x is acting. Okay. Now, how do you find out this? Okay, so as I said earlier, every theta in the standard element is equal to 2 theta in the Mohr circle. So here the plane is making an angle theta in anti-clockwise direction. Okay, so now we have to draw a plane. theta with respect to sp dash with respect to sp dash you can see this can see this angle is 2 theta at this angle theta. Okay. Now I want to find out the normal stress and shear stress acting on a plane which is inclined at an angle theta with respect to the plane on which sigma x is acting. Okay. So I'll draw. Drop a perpendicular from this point. Let this point be T, okay, T dash, let this be T dash, let this be T. Okay, so if you observe every point on the circumference of the Mohr circle represents a stress state. Okay, for example, if you draw a radial line, if you draw a radial line from the center, it will intersect the circumference of the Mohr circle at a point. So that point represent, represents the stress state corresponding to that plane. Here the radial line represents, represents the plane and the point represents the stress state on the on that plane. Okay. Remember that. Now I want to find out sigma theta. Now the normal stress. The normal stress. How do you find out? Normal stress. So the normal stress will be equal to the length OT, right? It will be equal to OT. OS is ST. Okay. So OS S is nothing but the midpoint of T. So, Sigma x plus sigma y by 2. Okay. Uh, let's take this r. This is the radius of the circle, st, st dash. This is, it represents the radius of the circle. Let r be the radius of the circle. Okay. And now st, st value will be equal to this is. R cos 2 theta minus theta. ST value will be equal to R cos 2 theta minus theta. This value will be equal to sigma x plus sigma y by 2 plus R cos 2 theta cos theta plus sin 2 theta sin beta it is equal to sigma x plus sigma y by 2 
plus r times of cos 2 theta into so cos beta from this diagram we try to find out cos beta cos beta is is equal to uh, sp sp by r right radius of the circle sp by r but what is sp sp is sp is half of the length pq right so half of the length pq pq to r but pq is nothing but sigma x minus sigma y sigma x minus sigma y by 2 r so this is cos beta now sin beta is equal to this length pp dash pp dash is nothing but tau x y tau x y by r so r cos 2 theta in cos beta is sigma x minus sigma y 2r plus sin 2 theta into sin beta is tau x y by r so the normal stress sigma theta will be equal to sigma x plus sigma y by 2 plus Sigma x minus sigma y by 2 cos 2 theta plus tau x y into sin 2 theta. Okay, so this is the normal stress acting on the plane which is inclined at an angle theta with respect to the plane on which sigma x is acting or simply let it be a b okay now we try to find out the shear stress acting on the plane a b Shear stress acting on the plane AB tau theta. Okay, now shear stress tau theta will be equal to it is with the T T dash T T dash right, which is equal to R sine tau theta minus beta. Again, equal to R sin 2 theta cos beta minus cos 2 theta sin beta. Sin 2 theta in cos beta is sigma x minus sigma y by 2R minus cos 2 theta into beta is tau x y by r so the shear stress acting on the plane tau theta will be sigma x minus sigma y by 2 sin 2 theta minus tau x y into cos 2 theta Okay. So these are nothing but the analytical solutions obtained by considering the equilibrium equations. Okay. But you can you can directly 
uh, calculate these values by using more circuit just by plotting okay the resultant stress acting on the plane can be given by square root of the resultant stress sigma r can be given by sigma theta square plus tau theta square which will be equal to forty dash it is the resultant stress acting on the plane okay again i repeat every point on the circumference of the more circle represents a represent a stress state on a plane which is represented by radial line okay uh, okay so now if you observe the more circle intersect x axis at two points and let it be t q to u1 u2 if you observe on u1 and u2 the shear stresses acting on them is zero so the stress states corresponding to points u1 u2 are nothing but the principal stresses okay nothing but the principal stresses okay here you can see the point v at the point v it represents the maximum shear stress condition okay so which will be the midpoint of u1 and u2 so the maximum shear stress that can be given by okay let the corresponding see sigma zero it is the Okay. So the maximum shear stress will be the midpoint uh, or uh, half of the diameter, which can be given by sigma one minus sigma two by two. Okay. Again, the midpoint of this u one and u two is same as the midpoint of sigma one and sigma x. So. You can obtain these values by differentiating also. So tau theta, if you if you differentiate with respect to tau theta, uh, with respect to theta, then you will get maximum shear stress equal to sigma one minus sigma two by two. We'll see. We can obtain it graphically also. So graphically, the maximum shear stress will be equal to. Sigma one minus sigma two by two, okay. and the midpoint, the midpoint of sigma one comma zero and sigma two comma zero, same as the midpoint of sigma x comma zero and sigma y comma zero. So sigma one plus sigma two by two, which will be equal to sigma x plus sigma y by two. That implies sigma one plus sigma two is equal to Sigma x plus sigma y. This is one important. Okay, in the given element, the normal stresses on any two perpendicular planes, the sum of the normal stresses on any two perpendicular planes is constant. The sum of the normal stresses. In two perpendicular planes is constant. This is one important point. Okay. Uh, 
anything else? Yeah. So here. Yeah. If you see the plane SU1, that represents the plane on which the major principal stress is acting. So beta is the angle at which angle at which the principal plane is acting in the Mohr circle. So beta by 2 will be the principal planes in the uh, standard element. Okay. So to let us find out the plane. The planes on which maximum principal stresses are acting. So if you write tan beta, tan beta is Tan beta is P, P dash by SP. P, P dash is nothing but tau x y. SP is nothing but half of the picture, which is sigma x minus sigma y by 2. So beta is equal to tan inverse of 2 tau x y by sigma x minus sigma y but the principal plane is half of the beta so beta by 2 which is represents principal plane half of tan inverse of 2 tau x y and then sigma x minus sigma y. Okay. If you substitute this value, this value in the equations we got earlier, you can find out the values of sigma 1 and sigma 2. From that, you can find out tau max by using this expression sigma 1 minus sigma 2 by 2. Okay. Uh, you can obtain tau max in terms of sigma x and sigma y by using more circle also. You can see here. So tau max is nothing but our radius, right? So from here, from the triangle, yes, we have radius. R square is equal to SP square plus PP dash square. So R square is equal to SP square is nothing but sigma x minus sigma y by 2. Max minus sigma y by 2 all square plus tau x y square. So R is this is another expression for R sigma x minus sigma y by 2 all square plus tau x y square. From this you can obtain sigma 1 also. Sigma 1 is nothing but OS plus uh, S U right. Yes, U is nothing but R. Sigma one is equal to Y S plus S U. Y S plus R. So Y S is nothing but sigma X plus sigma Y by two plus R is this expression. So this is the expression for major principal shift. Similarly, you can obtain sigma 2 as OS minus, OS minus R. Okay, 
So this is about the more subkill. The gate examinations mostly they will ask qualitative qualitative representation of more subkill for various kind of stress states. For example, uh, can you draw the more circle for pure shear condition? They may ask like this. So for pure shear, if you draw the element, so for pure shear, you can tell me. Which means there are no shear stresses acting. So there are no normal stresses acting, only shear stresses are acting. So expect. So if you draw the most circle, first we have to plot the normal stress. Since the normal stress is zero, both the normal stress are zero here. And tau x y one here, and the tau x y here. If you draw more circle, it will be like this. The more circle will be its center will be at origin. Okay. Tau x y, so the tau x. So the maximum normal stress also will be tau x y. The maximum principal stress. There is nothing. Okay. So one is tension, and the other one is compression. Let's see. Okay, and one more important condition, hydrostatic condition, in which there won't be any shear stress acting, will normal stress with equal magnitude. Normal stresses are equal magnitude, with shear stresses zero. For this kind of stress state, you can draw line. First, you plot the normal stress sigma. This is the first point, and the second point is also same. Yes. So, for hydrostatic condition, your Mohr circle will be a point circle. Okay. There are so many other cases. Any questions may ask, may be asked like this. For example, there is a simply supported beam. There is a simply supported beam subjected to uniformly distributed law. So this is the neutral axis. At mid span, there is a point P. So draw the more circle for the stress state at P, at point P. So first, you have to find out what kind of stresses are acting on that. So if you draw the bending moment diagram, it will be something like this. At the midpoint, it has bending moment. If you draw the shear force diagram, it will be something like this. You can observe at the midpoint, so you take the element. Take the element. Okay. So here you can observe at the midpoint there is no shear stress acting, but there is a bending moment. But the point 
P here is on the neutral axis. So which means bending stress. Even though there is bending moment, there won't be any bending stress. So there won't be any normal stress and shear stress. Okay, you need to be careful. For example, to take point at the bottom face. Now, it will be Q. At point Q, first you have to draw the stress state. As from the SFT, there is no shear force, as there won't be any shear stress, but there is bending moment. At point Q, because of the bending moment, there will be bending tension level. Sigma V will be. Okay, so this is the stress state. So if you draw more circle for this point here, sigma y is zero. So the more circle will be touching like this. Okay, so you have to practice so many problems like this. With this, I'll stop here.